Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Johnny. <laughs> there was just a slight enough delay. I was like, wait, just, did he forget? <laughs> he did. I forgot, but then I, I covered it. I was like, Damn, on the spot. Crushed it. Uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Um, we're still socially distant. It's the only way we can do the show. We we've never Johnny Ross and I have never physically been in the same place. Wow, it's a lot of pent up tension. This is like that's one way to put it. I think this. <laughs> I think as we record, this is our 90th episode, and so we've never like literally. Yeah. It's the only way we talk. Like I probably talk to him more than I talk to anybody else. I mean, you Pretty know, much. we'll all be robots soon, anyways, with uploaded consciousnesses. So what's the difference? True that. Yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking. So. Um, Today, the Rivian embargo lifted so we can talk about all things Rivian. Yes. Well, I, I could have talked about it before the embargo because, you know, I drove it, uh, like, helped to drive it across country on an epic 7,700-mile off-road. <laughs> Dude, we can, teasers. I know, teasers I know really we're supposed to, like, in. hide content later in the show. Can we please just go to that trip because yeah. that's all I've been thinking about since yeah. I saw that you guys, like, I saw you post, like, Super Secret Trip, and then I saw Holman post, Holman like, too. Super Secret Trip, and I was like... <laughs> I was trying to rack my brain of like, what are they in? and what are they doing? The Ram was in there too. So it was like trying to bridge the gap between what yeah. and what. We, we use the, uh, my personal long-term mm. TRX, which is just so destroyed. It's been sitting in a parking lot, rotting away since we got back as a support vehicle. So our, our video crew and our photo crew, they were in the TRX and we had two Rivians, uh, same identical trucks, different paint uh holly akla and uh rocky uh named after national parks we were in rocky uh the ruvian people were in holly akla so we had rocky and holly um yeah so there's this thing called the trans america trail and it's um this guy in tennessee figured out a way to um drive across country like almost completely off road um and uh you can do it from you start in North Carolina and you go to Oregon um, and you just take these crazy trails. And this is actually all these photos are from uh, what we called leg four of the trail. Okay. Um, yeah. Western stint. Yeah, this is Alex Kirsten and Scott Evans. Uh, Kirsten, Kirsten, whatever his name is. Um, I work with him. Um, is it his, he's, he's Hans, isn't he? Isn't, isn't that his Twitter? Isn't he Han Solo? Like I don't know. Twitter, getting... Instagram, he's A. Kirstein. But anyhow. I'm probably getting uh, people confused. Yeah. <laughs> that's confused. Anyways, we had nine Motor Trend editors out. We had 43 days on this trail. Um, we never used like a generator. We found places to charge. Rivian, uh, you know, they would go to hotels and hook up 220 volt chargers, uh, like at a Motel 6 or something like that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's, that's the that turnaround movie. on Black Bear. Yeah. That photo is from Black Bear Pass. This photo is great because you can see um, like a, like the front is down all the way. The back is up 13.1 inches. And what you can't see is they're literally at that moment, scraping on a rock and damaging the vehicle. Are they the really? <laughs> Oops, yeah. yeah, it's tight. Yeah, so was, that thing is absolutely tight. stuffed. What's happening on the, on the front end. It looks like there's one tiny little rectangular spot underneath the lights there. That's totally clean and everything else is filthy. This is this crazy technology, right? So what you do is you get a water bottle and a rag, <laughs> right? And you can clean off like where a camera is. Oh. And the headlights. Yeah. Mm. That's all. That's, that's all it is. Yeah. The most futuristic part of the truck. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. Everyone's that was like, what's my, going on there? Like, yeah. My favorite part of reading your Instagram was like, we clean the lights. Like, yeah. what is, oh, like I, I just missed that. Yeah. No one can no one can <laughs> believe that. But um, yeah, it was nuts. So what I did was me and Miguel Cortina, um, who's my my colleague at Motor Trend, we picked up the trail in Georgia, kind of like southeast Georgia, and we did Georgia, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi uh arkansas and oklahoma and what was great was like every morning it's like covid rates in mississippi oh, exploding you know but, <laughs> but luckily you got the uh, yeehaw luckily, portion we were, we were literally off-road by ourselves 99 percent of the time the only time we saw people was like late night trips to walmart which in uh, mississippi is something else um <laughs> and, but and also like in motels but yeah we were um yeah look at that look at that shot look that's at some that. flex that's pretty good. Yeah. 
Um, and that was, that was this is actually in Mississippi. Um, we had a road completely washed out, part of the trail just gone. Um, and yeah, we met the locals. That guy oh, that, that's a, uh, <laughs> yep, that's a weapon. <laughs> he was he was shooting rattlesnakes. Um, oh, but you can kind of see in the lower part of that picture what the trail that wash looks like. We had to. There was part where it was so washed out it was like five feet down. There was no way to get the trucks in or out, so we had to go through some um, pretty serious uh, uh, trees. We actually had to, this is my favorite part of the whole trip. We we brought a chainsaw with us because you never know. Yes, as and one does. The Rivians got, got through no problem, this little bypass. The TRX could not go through. Now, did you know <laughs> that a TRX is two inches wider than a Hummer H1? No, he's not. <laughs> that it's not. Oh it's my that God. freaking massive. So I know it's huge, but I didn't actually yeah. know the, yeah, the mass. Two inches wider, mass 83 versus 81 inches. And remember, Good a God. Hummer has an engine in the middle of the, the cab. That's how mm. wide it is. So the, the T-Rex is ridiculous. So we um we we tried to get around this tree. We actually wound up bashing in the rear uh uh fender of oh, that's the, uh, the, where that the came ramp. from. Yeah, so the, mm. the, the 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 executive decision was made. The tree had to go. By executive, I was like, "Cut it down!" So mm. <laughs> we fired up. We fired up the electric chainsaw, and the inverter on the ram couldn't power it. So we had to bring back a Rivian, and we had to plug in the electric chainsaw to the Rivian to cut down a tree, and it worked. And we freed the T Rex, and we got through. Now, I posted a picture. Uh, on our, we had we had a joint slack. It was a Motor Trend Rivian joint slack, and I put some pictures up of like us knocking the tree down, which we had a bunch of people on Motor Trend staff who were like Boy Scouts, and they're like, "Do no harm. What are you guys doing?" You've like, no trace. Bro. I'm like, it was 40 miles back to get out of where we were. We would have blown the schedule by a day. We wouldn't have made it because of the EVs. Yeah, you can see the dent there. That's, That's from a, a dent. tree. That's yeah. A dent. Uh, yeah, that's the damage right there. Um, that's not and that bad. Then, but here's the crazy part. Rivian had a meeting about it to like discuss. They're so green. They had to have a meeting about the ramifications of like cutting down. And by the way, we're in Mississippi. There's 80 trillion freaking trees. There's, there's more, trees more trees than anywhere, right? We cut down one tree. And by the way, other people had cut down a zillion trees to make this bypass to get around the road that it washed out. Just nothing was as wide as a TRX. They had a oh, meeting and, and, and it, was, it was getting really kind of strange. And finally, I said to one of the Rivian people, I'm like, so this wood dash here in the Rivian, this is like just magic. It's just like, whoop, and it just appears like no tree was cut down. <laughs> and then so they kind of dropped it. They stopped giving us crap. You should go back and retrieve that tree. We were gonna like, have a bring it to them. We were, no, I was literally, I was like, Miguel and I were like, yeah. let's have. Can we swear? Can I swear on the show? Yes, you can say whatever. Yes. Like, you want. Let's have a fucking funeral for the tree and be done with it. Because like, <laughs> it, it, it was like it was like twenty four hours of like Slack messages about the tree, you know, mm -hmm. and it was like it was twelve inches in 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 <laughs> circumference, not the diameter. So it was this little tiny tree. We just oh. couldn't. You know. So, anyways, oh, um. It was an amazing adventure. We did some um, pretty hardcore off-roading. Um, you know, like, is a Jeep 392 ultimately more capable? Sure. Um, but is this as capable as, like, a Ram TRX? Yes. Uh, it's kind of actually more capable since it can go more places since it's, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, 10 inches narrower. <laughs> um <laughs> We were oh yeah, there's that's a that's a bubble chainsaw I bought at Walmart. Um, Did not cut down the tree. No, 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 no. But honestly, a bubble chainsaw and an electric chainsaw are more closely related than a gasoline chainsaw. Um, yeah, we had we had a tent uh, on each one. Um, we mm -hmm. had a pullout kitchen. That's a joint photo there of Rivian and Motor Trend people. Um, it was just it was an awesome adventure, and my my part of the trip. Oh yeah, yeah. There you can kind of see where this is part of the washed out. That's a wash. That's yeah, a hill too. That looks gone. like there's some yeah. angle to it. Well, I'm sorry, what's that, Russ? It looks like a hill. That looks like it's you're you're climbing uphill too, not just like a flat wash. Yeah, no, this was we were, I think we we're heading down at this point, but it was just like it was, you know, it was look, you needed a pretty capable off-road vehicle, and, and these are really good. And then we learned, and this this you're not gonna get this till you well, I can tell you, but you're not gonna <laughs> truly get it to experience it. But so like, okay, 
you like to off-road, right? You need a vehicle with low gears, right? A reduction gear because you've got a, an internal combustion engine that's spinning at like two or 3,000 RPM to make that torque you need, right? Then you got to reduce it. So all that means is the transfer case is a Band-Aid on a horrible powertrain for off-road. <laughs> what if you had an individual wheel motor that made all of its torque before it moved, mm -hmm. right? And yes. so what that means is when you're going, you know, you know, when, like when you're off-roading and there's something you really got to climb over and you got to floor it a little bit, then immediately you jump on the brake pedal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just this elegant way to like creepy crawl up and down obstacles. And it's silent. The only thing you hear is like the rocks crunching under the tires. Um, it's unbelievable. It, it is That's the so future cool. of off-roading. There, there is, there's, there's, I don't, I, even Holman, like Sean Holman, who, People on staff, they call him right wing Johnny because we actually have all, all the same interests, but you know, he, he likes to like shoot things with guns or whatever. Uh, another um, white man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I kept I'm texting him because he was on wave three, right? So I kept texting him. I'm like, dude, Sean, this truck is amazing. And he's like, we'll see, we'll see. You know, doubting, doubting Thomas. Skeptical, skeptical, skeptical. And even he was blown away by it. You know, <laughs> he was, you know, he, he just said like, it, 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 like there was wildlife approaching us constantly because like there's no engine noise, you know, there's just like, yeah, the sound that's killer. Yeah. That's so and, good. Yeah. We almost hit like 8,000 deers. It was crazy. Um, I would have created more of a conversation on Slack. I would expect. Well, maybe, I mean, you know, you could, they have a way, cause you know, electric vehicles in the U S you have, they have to make a noise below 20 miles an hour. So that same speaker system, you could put out a anti deer noise or, you know, that that's an easy fix. Thanks. Um, but yeah, Dude, just your horns just, are super cheap. Seriously. Yeah. Like Walmart, five bucks. <laughs> Walmart, Mississippi. Supremely, there you go. But, but supremely amazing off-road vehicle. And <clears throat> um, 835 horsepower, 900 pound feet of torque. So it's not slow. Definitely not. Slow. I'll, I'll give you one more. We 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 did a we did a I, I haven't here's a scoop for you. I haven't written this up yet, but we did a we did a we did an off-road drag race, so gravel drag race of the T-Rex, which is the quickest pickup truck motor trends ever tested and the Rivian and uh the T-Rex ha had its windshield broken in three different places. It was oh. it was that much of a slaughter. It wow. was just like oh. The Rivian no. threw that many rocks that the T-Rex yeah. took it in three spots. Yeah. Oh, it took a lot more because it broke in three spots. <laughs> right now oh, it has man. seven breaks. Don't ask. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it happens. The, the poor T-Rex. But but anyways, my, my point is that like God, this this Rivian thing is this terribly named R1T yep. is like super duper awesome, excellent. Um, you know, over 300 miles of range. There's a 400 mile one mm -hmm. coming. Yep. Uh, we never, you know, we, I think we got down to like maybe 12 miles of range left. It took a little bit of planning. Yeah. There's, there's uh, mm -hmm. Frank Marcus and Sean Holman from our team at the continental divide about to go down uh, black bear pass. There's Sean. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was just an outstanding vehicle. Outstanding. So, like, I have so many cool. questions. Sorry, go Ross. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I was with you, the car for eight days. I know every. That, that was the first one. How many miles did you do off-road? 1800. Oh, oh off-road, probably, honestly, probably 1650 off-road. So yeah. the, the, like the Trans America Trail, yeah. just so you know, it doesn't go, it's not just a continuous dirt road. Like you'll take it it'll a part will dead end you'll get on the highway for 10 miles or a mile or 100 feet or whatever and then it'll pick back up mm -hmm. on but mm -hmm. i would say probably you know what honestly maybe it was like more like 1450 for us because there was a couple stretches in i want to say tennessee where we were on like just like back roads they weren't mm -hmm. quite there. that's but, still i mean yeah. so you and, know and, and the whole trip was set it was 7687 miles on the trail Mm -hmm. And yeah, there it is. And the majority of it was dirt, especially once you got out West, there's just, there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So Chris and I had on, um, Chris, was it Jason from mountain state overland who was talking yeah. about doing the trans America trail? So they're, and they're they, uh, West Virginia based. They're West Virginia based, but they said they like bit off way more than they could chew and ended up instead of doing like a third of it at a clip, they did like a fifth and yeah. You know, for the the big question, obviously nobody knew about this when before you guys started posting about it. But the big question from the off road community is like, is it the real deal? You know, because anybody can 
overbuild something. I mean, yeah. we've seen it with Ferrari how many times just for a press vehicle, but sure. you can't fake it off-road in the same way. Yeah. And and people aren't going to buy a truck like this in the same way that they would go and rock crawl a Wrangler or a, you know, um, the new Bronco or anything like that. The question for this was really, if somebody buys one, drives it to Utah, does like Canyonlands, and then goes up through like Moab and all those areas, is it going to survive? And this was like the torture test to prove all of that. And, you know, seeing the video firsthand, I think everybody now can kind of reel it in and, you know, not have the bullshit speculation. we, We were brutal, brutal, brutal to these trucks. I mean, again, the Ram that followed us, like, the sunroof no longer works. The 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 front oh. brakes are warped. I forget everything that's wrong with it. We really beat the hell out of the thing, um, and, and that's like one of the most impressive off-road vehicles like ever, ever made by man, right? And so it was struggling to keep up with these things. Um, and and uh, they're they're so good off-road. They're so good on-road. Um, you know, the, the suspension, I don't know what you guys know about the suspension, but the su- suspension is crazy because, um, you've got air suspension, uh, on all four corners. And then mm-hmm. the dampers are the same, like it's, it's the same supplier as the, the company that gives the, the, the di- diagonal hydraulic dampers to McLaren. So oh. the, the dampers are diagonally linked. Um, and so this is how on a lot of times when you don't have solid axles, you know, if, if, a if a vehicle goes up in the air, the wheel doesn't go down. Um, mm-hmm. and, and on this, because of the diagonal linking, like it'll, it'll, if, if the, you know, the back wheel gets pushed up, it'll push the opposite front wheel down. So you actually oh, get, like, that's you know, kind of like what Toyota does with, it used to be called X re X R E A S. And then it was uh, KDSS. It's kind a, of that. Cross if linkage, this is more like, but it's a sway bar. Bars. This, yeah. There's no sway bars. It just uses right. the, the diagonal hydraulic dampers. But the combination makes it just incredibly <laughs> capable off-road. And again, you know, the off-road mode by default is, is like 13.1 inches of travel. Um, you can pop it up to, uh, to move it like a mile an hour up to 15 inches. But the approach, breakover, departure angles are all pretty good. Breakover, mm-hmm. I mean, the thing's a long wheelbase, you know, it, right. it, so the breakover is not great. The, the SUV that's going to be exactly the same in every way, except that it'll be, um, uh, it'll be 11 inches shorter. So it's like, uh, oh, that'll help. I, I forget this wheel, this wheelbase is like, I, I, I'm forgetting what you can, you can Google it. But anyways, so it's 11 inches shorter for the SUV, which will be even more capable because of that. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, 36. We we beat it up. You know, did, did did the cars break at some point? I know of two times, like when I was there's a there's a picture. If you go through my Instagram, I'm like jumping out of a river and there's like rainbows blasting out of the side of the uh the thing. Um that moment as the front was in the air, the uh, complete rear suspension, the, the wow. air all came out of the rear shocks. Turned out it was it was what they called he had a cute way of saying it, he called it a post-production issue, and that was they just going over the vehicles, they unscrewed something and didn't, they hand tightened it. They didn't torque it properly. Ah. So the result was they tightened it. I watched them. We sat there next to them. They tightened it. And then there's an onboard compressor and it recompressed the suspension, total downtime, right. including diagnosis. Yeah, there it is. Total downtime, including diagnosis was less than 35 minutes. That's um, nothing. I mean, in all another fairness, time, like... another time they broke a damper and they replaced the damper, you know, that's um, for the abuse I mean, that you guys put off roading where a suspension part breaks. Yes. So yes. it's just like a normal truck. Oh. <laughs> like every weekend I've ever done that. Like pretty much every <laughs> single yeah. trip. You know, so they were, they were very stout. They were very stout. Um, you know, we didn't even, I, I will say Miguel and I had no tire punctures whatsoever. I believe every other leg had tire punctures because they're all amateurs, especially Holman despite what he said, <laughs> um, but we didn't, we didn't, we even had was a call like out. broken tree stumps with the, with the Ram and they, everyone else was like, they're popping Ram tires. Like they were, you know, diet pills. Um, the thing weighs so much. Or they never aired down the tires the way they should have. But anyways, how many nights did you guys actually camp? Me and Miguel. Yeah. Zero. We went Zero? on the okay. we hate camping wave. Yeah, we were, we were like, 
Mm -hmm. Imagine driving for 12 hours and having to dig out a latrine or whatever the hell campers do. So we didn't do any camping on purpose. We <laughs> okay. purposely lose a lot of fight. And everyone, it was funny because everyone was making fun of me and call, that was lunch. We just, yeah. So yeah, there's a, um, this, this, that truck. So that's, that's Holly. Uh, Holly has a stove and a sink. It's pretty cool. So the stove has two induction burners that run off the battery. And then the sink <laughs> has a, has a water storage thing. And then it has a, electric pump off the battery that you can like spray down dishes. And then if you look at the dude on the left, Kenneth, it's a Rivian guy, but on his, uh, his leg, you see there's a drawer that's pulled out. He's leaning against. So then all of your plates and utensils. Oh my God. That's so grinder, smart. Yeah. It, it packs into there. So it, it's really a smart system. And you see it has, it has a leg that drops down mm -hmm. um, to perch it. Support. Yeah. So for so the audio, it. for the listeners who aren't seeing this yeah. behind the back seats in the cab, yes in front of where the bed actually starts there's a it's kind of like a hollow tube that runs it's a tunnel yeah it's a tunnel yeah they horizontally through the tunnel. vehicle what'd you yeah, call so it they call it the gear tunnel gear and tunnel. then i thought you said gear tunnel thing that slides out that's called a shuttle right so the shuttle slides in and out if you get if you option for it without it it's just a hollow space and you know and, and miguel and i on our Rivian, we just put our bags in there. You know it's what I mean? Like, it's dry storage. Like you yeah, can use it for storage. anything. Um, but I will say the 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 little doors that fold down, uh, they can hold 400 pounds each. So it's a nice way to step up into the bed or just to sit on, even mm -hmm. for really fat people. Um, so uh, anyway, so this one has a shuttle, which has the, the kitchen and sink or the kitchen sink option. They're working on different stuff. We were in the deep south. And everyone who saw that, they're like, oh, man, could you, like, store rifles in there? Of and they're course. like, um, yes. no, we don't think Rivian will ever have a right. But there will be an aftermarket rifle or fishing pole or whatever storage. Somebody's already it's, working on what's it. What's the, the Range Rover? Is it Overfinch? Over yes. Finch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Over like that's, Finch. Yeah. That it comes with a monocle. <laughs> no, no, no. But it comes with really nice like uh like embossed and great yeah. uh, rifles whatever they are so but yeah so the, the kitchen was cool we cooked lunch on it a bunch um we weren't in the, everyone at rivian is apparently like really into camping i liked i love to go off-roading and stay in nice hotels with flushing toilets that's my dream mm -hmm. or uh, even Miguel, shitty airbnbs as long as there's running water yeah we had, we stayed in some amazing places and what was cool was Two of them were like these cabins just up in the woods. We had one up in, it was actually in Alabama, but looking down a river into Tennessee. Another one was in Arkansas somewhere up in the, up in the, um, the Ozarks. But, you know, Rivian found these places said, hey, could we install, we'll pay for it. Could we install some 220 volt chargers on your 220 volt lines? Smart. And now they're on the map. So anyone who's coming through with an EV, you can stay in these awesome uh awesome cabins i mean really really nice at the, especially this first one it's just like i would i would go on vacation there i would i would go out of my way to go there that was and really you smart charge your your ev so it's super smart and then as you know rivian's installing like the equivalent of the tesla supercharger network in national parks all over the country mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you'll be able to charge off road and right, which, which so. kind of takes a page from what jeep was saying they were going to do when they released the four by e's yeah so it, it's yeah, brilliant. And again, the difference is four by E can go 21 miles. This can go 314. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of Jeep though, uh, I mean, we know, so there's R1T, there's R1S, which is the SUV. Um, and then we haven't really heard much about future Rivian products. I think. Well, if you go to so, modertrend.com, uh, we have tons of that up today, actually. That's so, where I was going. Yeah. So, okay. Well, A, Here's the one that no one's really talked about. So, you know, they're making 100,000 electric vans for Amazon. Well, yeah. what's really popular right now? Like camper vans. Go van camper line. vans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, guess what? They're going to do an off road van. Brilliant. Um, Absolutely brilliant. Which, which makes all the sense in the world. That's what everybody, not everybody, but a lot of, yeah. a lot of people in my friend group, that's their dream would be to, you know, like uh, uh, do no harm, whatever, and, and camp and, mm -hmm. Whatever. As long as it uh, doesn't look as terrifying as those canoe things, those are still mildly uh, like micro machine video. Yeah, game -esque. I, I like the, I hope canoe happens. I, I, I have my doubts. But anyways, um, yes. then we think uh, this is uh, my colleague Alyssa was speculating. We think there's going to be a, a Wrangler type thing. So we know that uh, soon. There's going to be a Rivian with a removable roof. Actually, this is a funny story. Perfect. I was just in London 
and I was in the uh, Virgin Atlantic Lounge, and the guy next to me was on speakerphone um, screaming about how they've got to make the removable roof work for the Rivian. What's That's it going to so take? Funny. And I was like, <laughs> I'm literally like live chatting everyone at Motor Trade, like, you're not going to believe this. Um, and he kept looking at me as if he recognized me, and I was just pretending as if like I wasn't listening that much. But anyway, so how does he not uh, recognize you? <laughs> yeah, he's British. Just, I don't know. I, just that's, I guess drove I, yeah. the trucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I, what do I know? Anyhow, uh, you know, he's probably thinking, <laughs> what are the odds of this guy being in London right now? So uh, that I mean, the electric Wrangler competitor. So we know that there's an electric Wrangler in the pipeline. They had that electric concept, which actually had six speed manual. Yeah, Magneto yeah. six speed stick to an electric drivetrain. Um, but we were, we were talking to I was re-listening to our podcast with Doug DeMiro and, and we were talking about how much of a missed opportunity it is for Nissan to not have an Xterra. Like oh. four wheel no. drive SUVs are as hot as they'll ever be right now. Oh, it's, and it's insane. No, I mean, look, I mean, Nissan, that's a whole nother chapter, but like Jeep should have had an electric SUV two years ago, actually nine yeah. years ago. Like all these companies are caught with their pants down. There's not even going to be an electric Ram till 2024. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they just got caught sleeping. And then what it turns out is, boy, if you buy off the shelf stuff, um, you got a problem. Um, like, you know, Rivian's getting away with it because it's, it's a truck and it's big. Um, but like, you know, if you look at like the, the Porsche uh, Taycan's a great example, right? Um, they use somebody else's motors and batteries. So here's the thing, this thing, you know, it's EPA rated at 200 miles, which is, terrible in not, light of like lucid yeah, it's not good. and it's embarrassing that a pickup truck rivian which weighs by the way 6700 pounds oh jeez yeah, we're actually gonna weigh one in a couple weeks but they claim they're saying 6700 so actual weight is probably even more um, that might be more than the t-rex the t-rex is 7000 on the nose on the nose, oh, on the oh, nose. Oh, i thought it was like 66 and change yeah so so the rivian is 6700 um but anyway so you got this porsche so you know it doesn't make that much power compared to like again say the lucid or even now tesla's kind of has their gen 2 motors out Mm -hmm. and you know and it's it costs way more than both of them so it's a it's a you know it's porsche's in a bad spot with evs because they just you know they just don't have the technology right now um and even rivian um i think in that article you you showed the motor trend one even they want to start building their own motors and battery cells because if you can't control that you know you're stuck with something you know, I, I can't show you the size <laughs> on screen, but like, you know, the 12 inches in, in, in uh, diameter, as opposed to a lucid motor, which is like seven inches in diameter. And by the way, it makes twice as much power. So, yeah, that's wild. Uh, that's absolutely wild. But yeah. I mean, even for Rivian, like just scaling their platform is something that they could probably achieve a lot easier than, yeah. you know, well, somebody absolutely. building something Ground yeah, up. So, so the R1 platform is going to be this size stuff. They will do smaller stuff that probably won't have four wheel motors. It'll have two or three mm-hmm. wheel motors. Um, or like one in the motors. one for the front axle and two in the back. Maybe something like Actually, that. Honestly, with Rivian, probably two in the front, one in the back, or just one in mm-hmm. one. Um, because you know the, the other cool thing about the R1T, I hate the names. They it's get not good. The R1T. The conserve mode, what it does is it just declutches the rear motors off the wheels. So then you're in a front wheel drive truck, which, by the way, is still 410 pounds and uh, 450 pound feet of torque, <laughs> just as front wheel drive. It's not what a lightning is. Extended range mode. Um, and they've really done a nice job uh, making it drive great. And it was, it was interesting, too. I, when we asked him, I said, how much do you really gain efficiency wise from from you know declutching the rear motors they go less than you'd think they go the real gain is we drop the ride height and it's not so much aerodynamics but the half shafts are now straight in our normal height the half shafts are at an angle and that's just less Our efficient loss. so if you yeah. Yeah. straighten them that's where your real efficiency gains mm. come from and Hoss then we just part. declutch the motors because it adds another percent but it's like you know five or ten percent better to drop the ride height and again it's not that aerodynamic like the no. lucid which I know it's not a truck, but the Lucid is. No, like, we can absolutely talk about this thing because I think it's amazing. Oh, Lucid's just beyond cool. But it was yeah, the Lucid. It's the most efficient vehicle in history. It, 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 the drag coefficient is 0.2. Um, that new Mercedes looks like a like oh a giant God. Prius. 
is like 0.21, you know? Right. Uh, it wasn't the insight like 0.22, the first gen yeah, car. Yeah. 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 So, so this like thing is wild. And there's so much like, okay, this shot. So we're looking at the front three quarter view of the lucid for those of you listening. All right. The headlights are like two inches tall. Now what you need to know about the headlights is your car has two bulbs this thing has close to 9,000 individual little filament oh things. Um, the headlights are so good, they had to unfocus them because at, um, at night, the difference, it, it, when you see the difference between black and white, you think you're hitting something solid, or I should say light and dark. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so they actually had to like, their technology is so good, they had to like make it crappier. So I had to um, like fuzz the edge? Yeah, basically. They, How they much? really unfocused it. Um <laughs> not only are they like two inches high they're like an inch deep so like if you look at like the headlight off of i I know this because i just hit a deer and i had to pull the headlight out but in a mercedes s class the headlight is probably Uh, 18 inches deep mm -hmm. by 16 inches wide it's a monstrosity yeah yeah. these these headlights are like they're leds they're just these crazy little things and so what that does is the frunk um you know you could i i literally just did this today I stuck a six foot, 180 pound guy in the front <laughs> just, just to make proof of point. Uh, yeah. You, you, I, uh, I might have tried to fit in the frunk on the C8. It did not yeah. go very well. <laughs> no, no, but this, this you fit. And then the back trunk is twice as big. Oh my God. Um, oh, go back to, go back to the front view. So this barely has a grill, right? It has these yeah. two little inlets on the bottom there. This is, we're looking at the front bumper now. Well, what's actually behind there are these Venturi tunnels And what they do is they actually focus the air that's being sucked in and they shoot it perfectly in a perfect rectangle at the radiators. So if you look at like, if you were to do a thermodynamic scan of your vehicle's radiator, it gets hit in a circle. So you have a a rectangle or a square radiator that you just put air in a circle shape. Mm -hmm. With the Lucid, it's doing it in a perfect rectangle. So it's like you have a tiny little opening that's way more efficient than a big gaping grill. And it goes on from there. Everything about this car has been rethought, retuned. And again, that car you're looking at can go 520 miles on one charge and has 933 horsepower. How many years was it? Was like the full development process of this vehicle? Well, Peter Rawlinson has been at Lucid for eight and a half years. So oh, it's that long. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know exactly how hmm. long on this, but what they... What they've done, they've done two things that people don't know about. One is um, Formula E for the past six years, even though the battery packs say McLaren on them, uh, Lucid yes. actually makes the battery packs. Uh, uh, I, I was I was in the room up in Northern California where they literally make the battery packs and then stick them in a box uh, that says McLaren. Then they get mm. mounted to the cars. <laughs> so they yeah, that, a That's a very of- good licensing proposition. They did okay on that one. Yeah, they, they're not allowed to say it, but they looked at me they're like, you could say it. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, so like, yeah, so they, they really know more about batteries than anybody. And then the other thing is they've, they've been just obsessed with miniaturizing the, um, the, the powertrain. So, you know, each motor, I didn't say motor, but it's motor transmission and, and power supply is 160 pounds. I, I actually picked it up. It, it's not, you know, it's 160 pounds. Um, and, you know, if you look at like the similar unit in like a, a Model S, it's 300 pounds. Now in the Model S, it's 400 horsepower. In the Lucid, it's 670 horsepower. So it's like three, almost three times as powerful it, it, or, you know, uh, uh, what are they? they say? Like power density. Power to pound or whatever. Yeah. You know, so, and then by miniaturizing that, it makes everything's more efficient. It takes less power to spin it. That's how you get the big range. Uh, actually, at the, the counterintuitive thing is it makes them more powerful packaging. So the motors are smaller. The, tr- the front can be bigger. The trunk can be bigger. The passenger compartment can be bigger because you don't, if you look at like, you know, the original Model S, the, the, the power unit, the motors were the size of like a floor tom. They're massive. Mm-hmm. And, and on the Lucid, they're not. There's these little things. So it's just, they, they really just outthought everybody for right now. You know, it's, it's, and- it's, it's, it's an amazing vehicle. And I was, I think I'm still the only person that's driven one, um, but just like, you know, felt like I was driving a Nissan GTR. And I should, I should mention that car had 933 horsepower. Um, dude, you can read about it in my story, but due to just, 
a bunch of bad communication and stuff. I never took it into 933. I was driving around at 670 horsepower, hitting 125 miles an hour up on Angeles Crest. Allegedly. Allegedly. Because I thought, <laughs> I, thought I was getting 90% of the power. Don't even ask. It's a whole so, thing. So, I mean, it, it, oh, wait, real, real quick, real quick. There's another one that makes 1,111 horsepower. That's just psychotic. Yeah. Like, so yeah. it doesn't look like a bad thing in pictures either. I haven't seen one in person yet, but it, you know, something like, people assume that an electric vehicle like that's going to look like a science project and it looks like they really just push the wheels to the corners as far as they could go and and stretch it out is it yeah does it have like a presence in person because it kind yeah. of has that on yeah, I, the internet, I, I described at least. it i described it and I'm, I'm just lazy and also my brain doesn't work well these days but i said it's like if a citroen ds was going to be in blade runner and mm. i stand by that it's mm. just you that's know it's solid it, it, yeah yeah it's and then the the designer, I said that on Instagram, I think, and the designer, Dennis, he like liked it and, or gave me hearts or whatever you do. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I'm sticking with that. But yeah, no, it's really cool in person. The the different color roof is, is it's a stainless steel roof on, on the Dream Editions and the Grand Touring, I think. But I saw one, I, don't know, I get it. What's the difference? I saw one that had a carbon fiber roof when I was at their headquarters. They can do oh, all wow. kinds of different materials. <laughs> um, I saw a burgundy uh air it's called the lucid air so i wanted like this ox blood burgundy it was gorgeous just it was the black roof it was so cool that sounds very cool yeah i uh so so what are you looking forward to in the very near future of electric hummer. vehicles hummer. the electric hummer, <laughs> hummer. <laughs> the big middle finger fuck you of all fuck yous in uh in the car yeah. world yeah. yeah so okay so <laughs> How do I say this? Uh, <laughs> one of the guys very, very involved with the Hummer sent me a note, private message and said, you know how we're saying zero to 60 in three seconds? We're sandbagging it. Oh, God. Um, so apparently, and, and it was 8,000 pounds. <laughs> no, 9,500. Yeah, I say it's oh, nine fuck. something. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a 200. Plus. Just, just so people know why. It's, first of all, it's probably wider than a, than a TRX. Second of all, it has a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. What does that mean? Uh, well, the that means it has twice the battery pack of a Tesla Model S Plaid. Um, so it's just, you know, instead of 2,000 pounds of batteries, it has 4,000 pounds of batteries is basically what that means. The, the Rivian Absolutely has a 130 insane. watt, kil, uh, 30 kilowatt hour battery pack. The H2, whatever this thing is called, the, the Hummer is- Hummer GMC, that, Hummer EV. Hummer whatever yeah it, it, 200 kilowatt hours the biggest battery pack ever by a lot so uh, but, it's 87 inches wide <laughs> holy crap <laughs> well how's crazy. that gonna fit in a normal parking spot or lane it's or... not no it's not oh, but God. it can crab walk it's a thousand horsepower i forget how much torque it actually makes they, they did that stupid thing where they talked about like 11,000 or whatever yeah 11,000 yeah i think i think it's actually 1200 pound feet of torque which is enough yeah, that's, that's awesome enough <laughs> um, i'm i'm so excited for this thing i i i i just look the guy the chief engineer of it is the guy who did the sixth gen camaro and you know everyone who's ever driven a sixth gen camaro is like oh my god this is like a world-class sports car so oh. <laughs> that guy and you you say build a the craziest uh, off-road vehicle possible i have a hunch it's gonna be great uh, yeah it would be a, a a total disappointment if it wasn't, but I don't know. Chris, Chris just spent time in a uh, six gen Camaro, <laughs> not exactly ideal spec, but that was my, that was my <laughs> rental in Virginia. And the, the rental agent was like, do you want a convertible com uh, Camaro for the weekend? Or do you want a new Camry? And I went, well, used Camrys probably exist in my future because I have four kids and I'm going to need to buy crappy cars for them. And future convertible Camaros probably are never going to be, let's do the convertible. We walked outside. It was a coupe. V6 automatic V6 automatic in the hilly tight town of Charlottesville, Virginia. Anytime we got outside the city, I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic in city. Try to see traffic lights and look around tight corners around Hills. Like it's an abomination of sight lines. <laughs> I can't see, out of it. Yeah, but bad. that's, that's if, every Camaro take ever, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not breaking any new ground. I don't think it's that. But I remember when Randy Popes set a faster lap in a Camaro at Streets of Willow than than he did in a uh, Ferrari 458. He said, I don't know. I could see I have it pretty good. <laughs> so, 
what's the old race car kind of, saying like i think it's confirmation bias you know like yeah, 100%. I, I think like, a, like a lamborghini or conference is way harder to see out of than a commercial. is it really mm-hmm. i gotta oh yeah, yeah. I gotta Don't go rent a Uricon now. Yeah, <laughs> just, go, just go pick one up over the weekend. <laughs> but if they if they bake that chassis engineering into that know how Hummer, that, 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 like, that product mastery, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it'll it, it should be good. I, I I'm very excited for it. I'm very very excited. I and we say this every time it comes up, but we both wish they just scaled it down like seventy five percent. They will. You know? They will. They're, they're, they're doing. Just... They're doing twenty-two vehicles off the Ultium platform or whatever it's called. They, they will. This is just. One. You know, it, one was you, a van. You launch. You one launch with the hundred thousand dollar toy, mm-hmm. right? Lewis is doing the same thing. You get the early adopters with money to burn in, and then people say, "Oh, what's that?" You know. Right. So, Dude, I I recently left a bunch of like Rivian Facebook groups that I. Had, Cause I was super curious about it early on and I wanted to see like what all these people placed orders about. And I was like, I actually can't stand any of these people. I, oh, it what was, was, what was <laughs> I'm not in any groups. It was, it was more about like, I've oh, got right, my right. order for this, but I've got my order over here at Tesla too, for the Cybertruck and like, which oh, one's no, actually no. going to get it. I'm like, well, Rivian's actually producing vehicles. So yeah, that's going to happen first. Yep. And they're like, well, I don't know. I really think Tesla's going to beat them. Like there's- Look, I'll, just, I'll just say this, man. I was I, I drove my kid home from uh, daycare today. Tesla's one. There are I live in LA, but man, there are Teslas freaking everywhere. I wasn't even yep. paying attention. I was sitting at a stoplight. I'm like, oh yeah, there's a black Model Y. There's a white Model Three. That I'm like, oh my god, Dude, every other car is a Tesla. Like I'm working with a video agency in LA for some videos that we're doing through my day job and. I went on Turo to look for cars for these videos. Probably 85% of the cars in like the greater LA region on Turo under, you know, $400 for the day are Model Xs, Model 3s, Model Ys. Like it's, it's yeah, yeah they, they won. They, you know. They've done it, you know, they've done it. So. And um, that's why we know, have Rivian. Like, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I think it's, no, it's, it's incredible. And you know what? And the people that own them for the most part really love them, which is, which is something that, you know, the talking headset, which we're all part of, you know, they, they, <laughs> they, they, they overlook that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's, it's and I always tell people this, you know, they say, uh, you got to get a, uh, I don't know, a Google phone. It's like, it's it, the, the, the camera is 11% better than an iPhone and the, this, and I'm like, you're but never out of my works. dead hand. <laughs> never <laughs> get me off. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like Tesla's one people that yep. own them freaking love them. Yep. You know? And yeah. ultimately what do we give a shit if, Somebody oh, yeah. likes something that we don't like. It's not it's harming some kind us, of like you know. It, it's some kind of thing where you know eventually Tesla stock will go down, and finally, I told you so. Right, I've been I've been wrong for like when he's uh, valued at only eight hundred million instead of a billion. <laughs> yeah. Like oh years, poor Elon, but I'm finally right. You know? Yeah, I know. We, oh god, yeah, it's, I, it's such a strange world. Yeah. You guys want to talk about uh, cars with gasoline engines or trucks? Yeah, let's let's do some uh, let's do some t- like stuff that's feasible for mortals at this time. I got one parked out front that what's I'm that? Freaking in love with Defender ninety. Oh, I get it next yeah. Monday. Defender so. ninety. What a just a cool little thing. Um, Is the one you have on air or steel springs? Air. It's on air um so i have the launch edition there it is there's a there's a cooler shot uh, if you go uh i actually took it off-roading on on uh, up in rower flats um and it was so good i was just like this is i think it's yeah look at that oh um, got some uh some wheel lifts going there yeah and and what was great i put this picture up and somebody's like oh look at that oh it doesn't have any articulation and i was like and I, I replied like yeah when i went past those two Toyota Tacomas that were stuck and couldn't go any farther. I was like, man, I wish I had their articulation. <laughs> it, it, it's so good. And it was one of those things where I was like, I, I had my compressor with me. I'm like, am I going to air down the tires? And I was thinking back, I'm like, man, the stuff I've done in stock la- Land Rovers on street. T- these are actually mm-hmm. kind of decent tires, but like even on like terrible all seasons, they, they're just programmed to do incredible stuff. Um, and yeah, just so much fun. The only my my only thing I don't like about it, and hopefully the V8 solves this or an update. Um, I was going and, next. 
in the on-road mode that you cannot defeat traction control whatsoever so if you go around a corner at like 55 or 60 miles an hour it comes on so i took it up angeles crest you know one of the best roads in the world and it was just a nightmare because i had to you had to basically had to like like fake left foot brake every corner just to have the brake pedal in to defeat the traction control nanny coming on and so it's just a lot of work um and it's i feel as if the chassis could take it it feels pretty sporty but i think they're protecting the v8 and the upcoming svr after the v8 Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's gonna be madness uh, for people asking i put my kid's car seat in the back it was actually easy to get the car seat in it's easy to Mm. get in he's he's four and a half so like he can walk in i don't have to like throw him in um you know, there's, there, is there room behind the seats? No, not really. There's not much, but like, could my family of three people live with this thing? Like, absolutely. It is awesome. I love it. What, uh, Chris, do you remember what Glocker said in the Slack chat when he had the D90? Um, it was like, I'm sweating and I'm dying or something like that. <laughs> but it was more about, he couldn't get the he rear couldn't get the seat. car seat in the back. That, or it was, he couldn't get the rear seat flat for his camping gear. Yeah. No, the rear th- seat doesn't go flat. I think it was but car seat. He was trying to get in there. I I honestly thought it was going to be a fight, and it was like, it was super easy. I, I just I I I physically put the seat in. I then, um, without even going to the the driver's side, I just got in the back seat. I stood mm-hmm. uh, behind the driver's seat and just strapped it all in. You know, it was. Have it was, you yeah. tried to do the same in the JL Wrangler or the Bronco? Yeah. Yeah, they're easy. about uh, same thing. Uh, oh, with a with a two door. Um, yeah, with a two door. This is easy. I've never done a Bronco. I've done a, a two door uh, Wrangler. This is easier than the Wrangler, I thought, mm. just because like there's just more room uh, in the rear seat that is pretty cramped in the rear of a Wrangler, and also like there's no roll bar uh, in this to like yeah, it's just yeah, it was Asher dome on yeah okay yeah, so I, I had the top up. It was a soft top, top up with the roll bars. You know, obviously the Wrangler's a roll bar. So, yeah, going from our front segment of electric to our our very, very gas burning back end segment here, theoretical V8 or SVR D90 or 392 Jeep. Uh, it'd be it'd be interesting. So there's going to be, from what I understand, there's going to be a V8. Um, uh a v8 uh 90 or a you know, 110 yeah this 90. year yeah it's like 560 horsepower 555 yeah. or something and then like there's going to be an svr version which would be even more power and i think it'll switch to a bmw v8 um is my really yeah that that, that that supercharged v8 is done it just can't pass euro <laughs> seven emissions it's an old engine um, though that's that's like 2010 or 2011 yeah Sounds great, blah blah blah. But I think I think if you get the BMW, the four point four liter, um, first of all, it's a little bit smaller, so in some places that matters. But you know, you can get mm. it's over six hundred horsepower out of it. Where you know, you just you, it's really hard. You can do it with the supercharged Jag V eight, but there's something extremely dirty about it. But I think that's the plan. The cadence is the V eight, then the SVR version. I think um, it's going to be great. That's going to be just like. The silliest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Um. I. You know. It's hard. To, hard to say. I. I I'm. St- I still really like that Jeep 392. But you know. That said, honestly, if that Rivian, um, R1S, uh, shows up and it's like in the mid 60s, which is the same price as the Defender 90 with the mm-hmm. six cylinder, but you're telling me I can have 835 horsepower <laughs> for the price of like 395 Seriously. horsepower Defender 90. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the Rivian. Now, would an electric defender like absolutely kick ass? Yes. Like let's mm-hmm. let's do that. Let's let's get off this gasoline nonsense. And uh let's, you know, let's uh let's let's go all EV. There's there's I no mean, point anymore. You know, can only expect there. if the defender keeps doing as well as it's doing that they'll incorporate electric over yeah at some yeah. point. Well, and I mean thousand percent. Look, look, we know the next Range Rover is gonna be an EV, um, or at least right, there'll be an right. option to be full EV um there's the electric so, g-wagon which oh looks which like makes, it which makes it more sense than anything that oh yeah be, yeah oh, they need dude. to take it out back and kill it before they redesign it but oh that was just for the show that was yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 know, they know they know yeah <laughs> okay good yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah so like yeah well, like a thousand oh my god a thousand i haven't seen that G yet is, is, the world needs a thousand horsepower g 
Um, I saw yeah. a G-Wagon on 38s the other day. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw a G-Wagon, saw a G-Wagon with, with the rear door removed today. <laughs> I thought that was kind of odd. I saw one with the rear three-quarter window uh, completely missing on the highway today. Missing? <laughs> missing. Like, because no, you like, can... There was like residue on the outside, like somebody had tried to hold it in and it was no Oops. longer there. So, Oops. Yeah, because you can, I think you can buy replacements for those windows where they come out and you put a solid piece in place yeah. and it's got either like a jerry can holder, you know, or like no, no, I could, a cargo door. I could see the driver. Oh, so it's not okay. well. So this is awful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So hopefully, <laughs> for the audio listener, this is the electric G Wagon. This is the uh, Tron G Wagon. So, the worst thing, obviously, are the, the light strips down the side, which luckily I know from talking to Genesis, that's illegal. You cannot have <laughs> light strips on doors. So they couldn't do this even if they wanted to. And Good. I understand they don't want to. But even worse are the circles on the rear view mirror. The side views, yeah. No sense it's whatsoever. It's just so bad. It's just so freaking bad. Historically, one of the boxiest vehicles yeah. ever built. And there's a circle on the mirror with no reference whatsoever. It, well, it references the headlights. The headlights. Yeah, but I, I don't, I don't. I remember I read in the press release and I was like, this is just bullshit. Um, <laughs> but it's just a design exercise. You know, the, the grill, I, I don't know if it'll be that colorful, but they might actually, that might, you know, look, that's, you know, Mercedes EQ would be the mm-hmm. brand this would be sold under. The grill might be something like that. Hopefully not as light up, but it might be, but you know, because you just don't need an open grill in an EV. You know, you just don't. So yeah, you, yeah, you don't also need don't need the light bar on the roof that every bro puts on their well, Tacoma. Yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> the show car. Actually also yeah. terrible if you if, I don't know if you can see the back of this thing, but it has a instead of a um a spare tire it had like a square oh, no. it's a squirkle battery pack yeah it was like an extra battery pack something stupid but anyway yeah wasn't it, was, it like it was just two cool miles pack. of range or something it was something yeah, yeah. so but, silly but but again a, a thousand horsepower G Wagon like come to Papa you know yeah, yeah that so yeah. Oof. that's oof. I yeah. love the the extra brake light that's not like the third brake lights up there and then the yeah. roof rack has just another tail light segment again they have junior designers they need something to do mm-hmm. it's, you know look this is this is not mercedes is not putting this out you know? also the tread pattern on the it's tires is very unique uh, well it's a, it's a show car it's a pure yeah, show car. i like it yeah yeah i like that's something that won't actually yeah, it be looks real. like the uh microchip like embroiderment that everybody does to emulate that the resistors yeah pretty much <laughs> as it rolls down the road <laughs> so okay um looking at the clock chris anywhere you want to go anywhere that oh, we did a big rivian trip for me that's really i was okay. like I, I wanted to have johnny back on the show and then all of that came out and i was like oh thank god i've already started these emails with johnny <laughs> yeah. and it, it, it not in on top of opening up what everybody thinks of and about Rivian. It also, I think, drew a lot of attention to the Transamerica Trail. Like, well, I know I hadn't looked at it in three years, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. No, no one had ever even heard of this thing. It, it, again, it's, it's mostly motorcycles. We know for sure yeah. we're the first EVs to ever do it. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just this strange thing. There was a couple people motorcycles and also bikes people that do like you know, like six month bike riding uh trips right. which to me is a yeah, definition of misery but anyways yeah. they're, they're how on earth yeah and then if you if you look at that map that, that you show but if you, or if you look at you know, this google trans america trail you can see the original trail really doesn't do west of the rockies it stays mm-hmm. in between the rockies and it kind of goes north to minnesota i think or montana something like that um because the guy was doing it on his motorcycle and then they've subsequently other people have at they want to go coast to coast because of course you want to go coast to coast yeah. so then you go west of the rockies and that's mm-hmm. where it gets you know black bear pass and really grueling right. um that was the most slow going uh, and there's i found like an original map yeah there's two routes now too from the rockies you can go like south towards LA. california i've never and seen the california route. oregon yeah but the California route would have been easier for you guys. <laughs> you yeah, seriously. I, we, uh, we, that must be brand new. I, I've never seen that. In fact, on this map you're showing, it's not there. But It's not yeah. there, no. This one maybe I think I'm was mistaken. more original. Maybe it did go west of the Rockies. What do I know? Anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it curved back and it ended up in Minnesota or something like that. 
This is the one I had up earlier. I gotta yeah. reopen it. Yeah, although that one you had up earlier, I'd never seen that. I looked it up, not a bot. I looked at like three maps, but I never saw the <laughs> LA part. But also, I mean, that's another part of the story was so we drove it to Oregon and then we had to drive it back to LA. Um, so then they kept going. So um, you know, the, the poor TRX had to do that too. So. <laughs> But, that's pretty yeah funny. like see that new york thing and the la thing that's i've never even i've never, I've never heard, heard of the new york section and i yeah. basically live in new york yeah but, so but yeah so that 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 north carolina and then it would it goes to oklahoma and then it and then it i guess it went through colorado then it curved up and got back mm-hmm. to minnesota somehow this is a weird map there's a there's a different map anyhow yep we're talking about maps on a podcast but i think I, that's I, the yeah, bike it's, track, it's a fun trip fun trip yeah, I think I, actually I, like a dedicated like Trans American Trail website for motorcycles. There has to be because there's those backcountry discovery routes, and there's a dedicated website for every leg of that of each individual state. So there's got to be. Cool. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the Rivian. I know they were testing them at Monticello. They have like that off road course over at Monticello, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they basically rented the place out for like a, I think a month. And yeah, I. I haven't seen one yet other than new york auto show right the rest yeah of the okay this is this is the proper map this is the one i looked at that so you, that, that yeah. red line is the original and then everything else is whatever. Mm-hmm. so i was wrong about going west of the rockies obviously but uh, <laughs> i knew it ended in minnesota so but it definitely skipped nevada like Although it, it ended just in so- wisconsin so what am i even talking about but anyways close enough yeah it, it skips nevada and it totally oh, skips yes. texas too which i kind of like <laughs> why not skip text dude, dude you get so close to good barbecue <laughs> you had, you had, you had you good barbecue you had, it had to be oklahoma but because you, you had kansas on one side and texas on the other side yeah we were, we were oklahoma was good we had actually the best barbecue we had was in i want to say it was in georgia right next to alabama but it could have been tennessee right next to alabama but we found this little place it was unbelievable so good so the whole, hole in the walls are the best for it was the holiest in the whole wall. It was amazing. It was like, they it literally wrong. had holes in the wall i it was one of those weird things where i was everyone's like i'm hungry and they're like let's find a place to cook and you know look you, if, you, if you had a chef with you it'd be good food but we didn't so i was like how about that place and everyone's like there's no way it's open and they were totally open and it was like one of the best meals it was incredible that's so amazing great. how was uh how was goodwood Oh, the revival. Yeah, that was pretty special. That's good. Uh, Back in full flame. Uh, you know, if you're into cars or airplanes or military history or cosplay, uh, put that on your love. to-do list. That's that's an incredible event. Um, for those who don't know what it is, the revival, it celebrates sort of, you know, old cars. Uh, basically like, you know, I don't know, the, the 20s to like the late 60s um yeah so that picture there it's a that's a uh, you know world war ii jeep with a trailer on it so we we helicoptered in as you do um our helicopter <laughs> land actually before our helicopter would land we had to make another landing because there's three spitfires up in the air um and uh then once the spitfires landed we took off we landed we got picked up in this i rode in the trailer of this and then you get in line to get in and what's great is everyone is in costume you have to be in period costume and 99% of, um, you know, the, the, the attendees are in costume. And for the 1% that isn't, they have these actors they hire and they run around and they're like, oh, I, sorry, governor, your luggage must be lost. We'll find you. <laughs> just it, shames it, them. They just, they just harass them mercilessly <laughs> it's the like, whole time. And it's it great. I went to Harry that. Potter world years ago and my picture's on my credit card. And when I paid with the card, the guy's like, hey, your, your, your card's broken. Because all the pictures move in Harry Potter, yeah. Uh, I was like, dude, that's a horrible Clever. joke, but I'm I'm glad I understood it. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm still not getting it. But, but um, <laughs> wait till he gets older. Get there and it's like it's like all these amazing World War II airplanes, um, and just and the cars are incredible. And then they really race and they really freaking destroy these vehicles. They really go the are, are nuts. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of, and this is just people just show up dressed like this, you know what I mean? And, and it's 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 fantastic, and it's it's sort of like, um, you know, with the first couple hours you're there, you're like, whoa, this is like a movie set, and then after a couple days, you don't even think it's abnormal. You just suddenly mm-hmm. are transported back in time, and it's it's super fun. That's pretty cool. Um, I need yeah, to it was, make it over it was, there for that. 
yeah i've been meaning to go for forever and i finally got to go this year and it was like lived up to the hype it was very good that's it oh yeah look at that there, yeah that's there were two e-type prototypes that's one of two the other one got destroyed so and it was racing you know it was, it was out there right going around. uh I'm going to the Greenwich Concours d'Elegance in a few weeks, yeah. and I'm I'm thinking about not telling anybody and just dressing up like in period, correct? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, there will be some just people see what like, happens. But you know, that's the thing. Everyone's like, "Oh, they should do this in the U.S.," and I'm like, "No, it would be like 70 percent of the people don't bother." Of course, you know, just, we just I get the, the Brits like the, to dress up. They, they like all that pomp and circumstance. We we have Radwood there. Sure we have red yeah we like, also have that what's that race the race of oh god I'm never the remember. race of gentlemen race of gentlemen yeah With yeah but old... if you look at the spectators they're not dressed up no it's, yeah. it's, no. by the it's way just it's just the people like in rockabilly dudes it's not they're not even that dressed up yeah right. this is like right. people go all out i mean it was it was really cool it was yeah that looks great cool. oh i don't know that i can and they, and they just don't mess around <laughs> like every time you turn around there's like dancers there's the singing groups, there's, you know, motorcycle gangs. It was, it was just awesome. Sounds kind of like mayhem. And, and that's fantastic. <laughs> We've yeah, had so much was, time of being was, restrained. It was, it was just so well done. It was just, it was just a really impressive event. I mean, I know I met him. He has no idea who I am, but the, the new, the 11th Duke of Richmond, he's just an impressive guy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, you could probably zoom in on this picture and he's like, most people aren't dressed up. Mm-hmm. I would tend to he's just it. wearing a bikini let's be honest that's not really that true that's, yeah that looks more 50s jean, jean shorts yeah, yeah that right. but i think that's what it is for us like for us it's like the 50s and the 60s where yeah. england they get to go older and... that's yeah no fair. i mean and it's mostly world war ii i mean it's that era that's that's the thing because there's so much they actually had a cool on, on sunday they had like a the whole track was taken over by world war ii military vehicles it was awesome like everything and it was almost the entire track yeah there's a spitfire um that's uh I once out of Winnipeg. Uh that was a Mark Six, I think. So that was like a 1943. Um that one is actually a 1940. That was a really early one. It was a Mark II. Uh that's my my great uncle flew one like that. Um so it was, it was very cool. Yeah, there's a there's a bomb tractor. <laughs> um, bomb tractor around all over the place. God damn. Yeah, but you can see everyone in the background. Those are those are not, those are just people that showed up dressed that right. way. I mean, right. to the nines as they I say. wonder I wonder how much time they put into their costumes like I mean I hope it's I, a lot no I had to I had to spend a couple hours shopping in London and up in you know vintage shops or they call them what do they call them they call them charity shops in in uh in Shoreditch um so it was yeah it was it was it was a whole thing I had two outfits and but it was cool. imagine. I cannot imagine it was great it was it was really really fun I had a wonderful wonderful time did I the- I I'd tie on my list. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I'd rather go to Japan just to go to Japan, but then like you go to Japan. Japan's amazing. Uh, or Australia, is, go to Ledford. This is honestly, honestly, like in terms of being in a walking dream, uh, this is similar to being in Tokyo. Just nothing. Is it okay? It's just mm-hmm. you lose track of like Western American reality, which is I, I think a key to like keeping your sanity. Which <laughs> I'm I'm really so. curious because I'm uh, I'm a little short of six four. Like I'm fairly tall, so Oof. Tokyo should be interesting. You're gonna. Oh, I'm a giant time. in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Uh, a bearded white man in Tokyo, like, just get really drunk because they respect drunkenness. They don't like. Okay. They don't like bearded white people. But that's easy enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get. It'll be, yeah, it'll be that box. counterculture to the years I spent living in Thailand as a child, where I was a blonde <laughs> kid until like <laughs> everywhere I went, like my cheeks got pinched because like every yeah. Thai person was like, "Look at this adorable pale blonde thing!" Like, yeah, so so yeah. counterintuitive. But it's yeah, oh, but it's it, the, the revival is good. I still think Pebble Beach is more fun, but that's just me. But the revival because mm. you know, you're also playing dress up at Pebble, just so mm. similar vein, but it's like yeah. fancy it's, it's dress up. Fun. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll run through my updates. I'll do the three minute round of updates on my side Perfect. just to close things out. So Yukon Denali Diesel left yesterday and it was actually really good. Um, it was like 82 as tested, which is a, a, a it's a big number. That's like almost Escalade money. 50s and um, new 35. Don't 50s forget. and new 35. But it averaged on my drive from Connecticut to New Jersey, I got like 26.7 driving, you know, 
at speed, which is it's good for a six thousand. Like you weren't pound vehicle. hypermiling. You were no, just no, riding no. it. I was in the left lane. I was cruising. I was trying to get to a wedding. So um, we, we had dueling weddings over the we weekend. Did. We had very different <laughs> wedding experiences, but. Yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, though, but you know, you're you're shooting stuff out the tailpipe that causes lung cancer in little children. So <laughs> switch to electric. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, no. I, if it had an electric drivetrain, it probably would have been even better because and, it was and twice the power and twice the power. The the torque was good. They're like down low, getting away from a stop. It was a little uh, laggy. And twice the torque. And twice the torque. Yes. <laughs> um hey, hey actually know. guys I, i'm gonna be rude i gotta run i didn't realize all good all good um You're i good. can hear my wife trying to get the kids to sleep and i promise her i do that but do you, do you have anything uh, you want to plug yes oh uh just read motor trend uh listen to spikes car radio and uh follow me on instagram at johnny lieberman no agent johnny at johnny lieberman on instagram Sweet. And i think that's it yeah know. we I'll, would love to get I'll spike on to talk like defender spike? life yeah, too good luck. i know good luck. i know but we know he's <laughs> in the uh He'll his, say no, but I'll ask him. Yeah. It's it's completely worth an ask. He doesn't do any off roading at all. He'll he's he's yeah. like he's like no, I bought a Defender to, for Beverly Hills. That's that's right. Really neat. Yeah, that's hysterical because we just had Doug on and Doug's Doug said he's done what like five thousand miles off roading his Defender or something like that, three thousand, something Which, like yeah, that. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, Beach I love miles. going off road. Um, look, I, I know guys that buy. G wagons that don't go off road, and I know other guys that buy Porsches that don't take them to track. So you know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, if you know. ever want to do some uh, some like hardcore rock crawling or go up to the you know New Hampshire main area and do some off roading, got an invite. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just gonna say, I also know a lot of people, myself included, who own dive watches who have never dived and own pilot watches <laughs> that can't fly planes. Yeah, so it's yeah. okay. You're allowed to buy stuff you like. It's it's you know, we're plenty, still a free country. Plenty of people with guitars who have never learned a song. Yeah, I know. I know about three songs. So. One well, three. <laughs> there Anyways, we go. I got to run, boy. All right, thanks, well, Johnny. Let, let's do it again. Be well. Sounds good. Definitely. Bye, bye. bye, All right, bye. Man. Talk to you later. All right, finish your. I'll finish my updates and then I. I time you gotta go. To. I got. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta do schoolwork and then I gotta wake up to go to the DMV to hopefully finally get the Jeep registration. You pay your out. seven bucks. Uh, I you know I paid my three dollars and fifty nine cents. That's what it was. Sorry. Um. So t- and then I got emissions done. It passed, surprise. And uh, now I will hopefully get license plates a month later. Anyways, um, Denali Diesel has gone. They swapped it for the new Frontier, the okay. first the first new Frontier in uh, one, two, three, four presidents. So It's like 14 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But technically four presidents. So that's here. Um, it's... I've moved it all of like 10 feet from where it got dropped off. And the guy who dropped it off, I said, anything I need to know, you know, cause I always just like pick their brains to see what their yeah. impressions are after driving it. And he looks at me and he goes, it has the heaviest steering of anything I've ever driven. It's like, I don't know if I believe that. And I got in and backed it up and I was like, holy shit, how did they actually let this go through production? <laughs> so I'll report back after I drive it 800 miles this weekend. Okay. And, uh, and I'm picking up in New Hampshire, a 2021 players razor trail s1000 premium which oh, is crap that was a, a lot of words and numbers. a lot of words and a long name for what is basically just the i think the narrowest razor in which you can get the thousand cc non-turbo engine you said so. 2021 polaris razor, razor s- trail s oh. <laughs> trail s1000 premium a, it's a uh, mumble jumble of, of letters and uh, descriptors. Google doesn't so, know how to find images of it. So well, that's okay. Pull up a 2021 Razor 1000 and I guarantee you it's a picture of 99% of the same thing. I got Trail S on the side of it. So that's close enough. It's going to, if it's not a thousand, it's there you go. That's your, that's your home screen. That's definitely what? not the Razor. <laughs> what is happening? I hit your, yeah. the, I clicked yep. the Google. Nope. <laughs> that, that's exactly, that's, that could very well be the same vehicle that I'm going to have my ass in on Friday and Saturday. Sweet. So yeah, looking forward to that. And you're going to tow this. It. Wait, no, you're picking it up in New Hampshire. So you don't even have to tow. I'm it. driving to New Hampshire and picking it up in New Hampshire and then yeah, riding it up there. So will your arms be more tired from driving the frontier or from driving the Polaris? Tune in That's next good. week. That is very good <laughs> question. And I will report back as soon as I have more. So that's it. I got nothing else. Sweet. Well, then I'm going to wrap everything up. So cool. 
Uh, you can rate and review our show on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. We've had a ton of new YouTube views. Thanks, Doug. Oh, uh, us. thanks, Doug. <laughs> uh, you can follow Johnny's at Johnny Lieberman on Instagram. There is no H in Johnny, J O N N Y. Lieberman is spelled the ex- only way I know how to spell Lieberman. Um, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read our write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, and everyday driver again. Mm-hmm. Which yep. is just every dra- driver. Every... I'm adding the again. They don't have like a, a <laughs> yeah. website. It's uh, yeah. I, I was. By the way, I'm going to buy that URL time. right now, just in case. Everyday driver again. Yeah. <laughs> just in case Paul and Tom want to <sighs> sequel it off. So <laughs> Ross is no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram. I'm at Overlanding Dad on Twitter mm-hmm. and Instagram, and that's the show. We did it. That's the show.